All right, we're back. Uh, if you're new to the channel, make sure you subscribe to the channel as well as share the videos if you like them. Share them on your timeline, share them with Tesla so Tesla gets the attention. We're making new videos uh, more frequently now, videos about uh, the car, about updates, suggestions that they should make, a lot of which they've already implemented. We'll do another video on that. Very quickly, uh, Tesla released two updates in two weeks. Now we're on uh, 2019 8.5 which releases the new Navigator on Autopilot uh, feature that allows you to uh, disable the confirmation of auto, auto lane changing. So disable the confirmation of auto lane changing, which gives a little bit more of the feeling of autonomy or semi-autonomy, I should say, on the highway so the car can make lane changes on its own without having you to confirm that. So that's going to be pretty cool. Um, in addition to that, everything else is all the same from before with auto steer stoplight warning as well as sentry mode and new acceleration mode. So all that's the same, but now what they've just added again is that new that new feature for uh, Navigate on Autopilot. So let's take a look at it really quickly and then let's get on the road and test it out. Okay, so in Navigate on Autopilot, first and foremost, you definitely have to turn it on. It gives you the disclaimer for what Navigate on Autopilot is. I'll click yes, but now you also want to customize this and now you have a variety of different settings in addition to the uh, speed-based lane changes, which have the different uh, aggressive settings for how aggressive or how constant you want the car to make changes based on the, uh, the speed of the preceding car. Uh, but right now it has one, enable at start of every trip. So that's a good thing. So that means that every time you turn on uh, autopilot, when you have a navigation instruction active, it's going to automatically engage navigate on autopilot. So we definitely want to turn this on um, I typically like average in terms of speed based lane changes, Mad Max being the most aggressive, and that means that it will more frequently look to make lane changes based on a car in front of you uh, limiting your speed, the set speed that you have. So I'm going to go to average instead of Mad Max. And then here's the key feature here, require lane change confirmation. This means that you will no longer need to confirm with the car that you want to make a lane change. The car can make the lane change all on its own without your confirmation. Let's see what that's going to look like. I'm going to click require lane change. No, I get a little bit of a disclaimer here. This does not make your vehicle autonomous. Again, just emphasizing the point. You must continue to keep your hands on the wheel, monitor the vehicle surroundings. Lane changes may happen quickly at any time and must remain in control. Okay, so you are, are you sure you want to disable, disable this? Yes, I want to disable this. And now we have a lane change notification, which is also kind of interesting. It tells you what happens when that lane change is initiated. You can have a chime, you can have a vibration, or you can have both. I'm going to leave it to both just to be sure and be certain and get a feel for it. So it's going to chime when it lane changes. It's also going to vibrate the steering wheel so I can see that as well. So I'm going to leave it to both uh, and be good to go. And then from there, you're pretty much good to go. We just jump on the highway. I'm going to set a direction, uh, and then we're, we're off to the races and see what this is all about. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead, get on the highway, and I'm going to set my destination as a nearby supercharger, if you can see on the right here. I'll select the supercharger. It's calculating. Navigate on autopilot is automatically selected as the default. And I believe once I actually put it in engage autopilot, that's when Navigate on autopilot will start making lane speed based lane changes all on its own without confirmation this is the first drive for me so we'll see what happens uh, i've learned from my last time i won't get too excited to uh ex <laughs> to ward off some of you guys who are making fun of me but i'll uh, i'll try to contain myself and see what it does okay so i'll activate autopilot now i'll set it to 70 because the speed limit changes to 65 here once we get down here and so Navigator Autopilot is, is, is active now. Okay. So far, so good. Same as 8.3. 8, 8. Uh, 8. In terms of the smoothness of the autopilot, definitely smooth. <clears throat> no cars in front of me, so I can't test out the lane change just yet. But uh, once we get further up towards some additional cars, that's when I suspect we'll start to see those speed-based lane changes when someone impedes our progress uh, causing us to slow down and it needs to make a change. Um, I think I'll force the issue here by just getting in this lane. Again, I can just tap the turnstock here. It'll make the lane change automatically for me. Okay. I have my one hand resting. You can't see in the view, but I just have one hand resting just to keep uh, autopilot compliant. But as I noted before in the last update, the, the nag seems to have been reduced uh, greatly. 
So very smooth, very composed. Again, a situation where we typically think to, to veer off. It's going straight. That's always good. Now it gives me a little warning up here. It says, hey, up, upcoming lane change, tap to cancel. So slow down just a bit for the police officer who's looking like he's gonna get somebody. Everyone's slowing down for him. The car is actually slowing down too. <laughs> I don't know why that is. That's kind of cool. Maybe it knew it was a cop. Maybe it recognizes cops, I'm not sure. Okay, a merge here, merge lane. Does a really good job staying composed and not trying to center itself, so that's good. Again, shows me what's happening in the instrument cluster here. So that cop is pulling someone over. Uh, I'm going to disengage briefly just so I can get out of the way of the uh, police officer. And now re-engage. Proper speed limit. I'm going to go up one, just five miles an hour, just so I can show what this looks like and show what this does. Just because the speed of traffic is moving pretty fast right here. Okay. Again, very composed, very solid so far. Only got a few miles to go before I hit my destination. Um, now, I, I marked a supercharger here, so there's supposed to be rumors of a sort of battery preheating situation happening for when you navigate to a supercharger. I don't think that's active just yet. Uh, maybe it'll start with the Model 3, as, as most things do these days. But we'll see what happens. So far, so good. Nothing's happening there. All right, it's not made a lane change yet. But let's see. Now, this overpass coming up is usually where a lot of phantom braking happens in previous iterations of autopilot and navigator autopilot. I'll be curious to see how the car handles this situation up here. And typically overpasses do it. I think it might be the crossing of the, the geolocations, the, the speed limit of the overpass versus the speed limit of the highway, sort of conflicting from the satellite perspective. All right, starting to slow down already, see? Phantom braking right now, exactly, wow pretty aggressive too. Putting my foot on the accelerator to override it. And now it's prompting me for a lane change. So now it's doing the auto lane change right now. Turn signal. I didn't touch it. There's a new animation as well. It's animated when it tells you wants to hold the wheel. It's animated. I'm moving over now. Car sees me, lets me go through, which is nice of him. Wow, pretty, pretty interesting turn of events. Now he's mad, so he's going around me. So sorry about that. But interesting combination of events. One phantom braking. Still a thing, still an issue, not sure why. Again, I, my theory is that it's the intersecting uh, speed zones from the overpass and then the road that you're on. Auto lane chain does work, it's effective. It gives me a plenty of warning and lets me cancel. And then the new warning for when your hand is on the, on the wheel is now animated at the top of the screen. Pretty cool. We have the exit coming up soon. Interested to see what's going to happen here. Phantom braking is pretty aggressive, uh, by the way, so be, be mindful. If you ever get into a situation where the car starts to brake, you can disengage autopilot, pushing forward on the stock, or pushing up on the stock, I believe it's from Model 3, or just hold your foot on the accelerator, okay? Prompting me for another lane change automatically. Again, need my hands on the wheel, so it's, it's prompting me to keep my hand on the wheel as I point. Hands on the wheel, lane change is there, nice and smooth, I like it, I like it. We have the exit coming up, so I'm interested to see what's going to happen for the exit. Slowing down for the exit and the car in front of me. Okay. Turn signal, takes the exit, nice. And then should prompt me to disengage the prompt there that's going to disengage, navigate on autopilot, and revert just to autopilot using a geofence for the ramp to allow it to continue to be on autopilot once it disengages. So it's going to disengage, continue to be on autopilot until it gets to a certain point, and then it'll slow down and sort of pass back over control to you. Okay. Gives me the warning. And here's a stoplight situation. No, no stoplight here either. So, okay, so there you have it on the first pass. Navigate on autopilot, auto lane change, update 2019 8.5. Works pretty good so far. New animation at the top. 
as well as requiring hands on wheel when making auto lane changes, which is good for safety purposes. We'll try another pass on another road and see what happens. Seemingly slowing down, but now speeding back up again to get to the next exit. And as you see, the, the, the angle right here of that turn is pretty steep. I'm interested to see how it's going to take that. Okay, turn signals on. Wow, it's pretty aggressive. Wow, pretty aggressive. Almost hit the curb. Not liking that. Now it's taking this turn pretty nice, though. Okay, so now it disengages autopilot, but autopilot is still being, is that still active? Autopilot is still active here, taking me around the turn. So it's going to take me all the way around slowing down the speed obviously to get around the turn and then it's going to give me back control presumably that's pretty cool it's taking the entire turn okay now it tells me autopilot is complete I have to press the okay now it's continuing on autopilot i think it quickly saw that it said to press the accelerator to continue and now i'm still on autopilot so that's pretty seamless that's pretty seamless Okay, I see what happens now. So if you're just having your hand off the wheel, there's the static blinking at the top of the screen in white. If you have your hand off the wheel for the auto lane change, like this, then it shows you the direction you're turning and then animates. So I'll put my hand back on and then it makes you, it, it, it initiates the turn. It won't initiate the turn unless your hand is on the wheel. Good safety feature. See that? There's the tap to cancel the lane change, telling you that a lane change is coming up. Shows you the line, the lane that's going to be in. And now initiates the lane change. My hand is on the wheel, so it's just going to do it. If I didn't have my hand on the wheel, it would wait for it to be on the wheel in order to do it. Very smooth, very good. Even though I have a car coming up right behind me, it still got me in there. See how it takes the exit? This is another exit that's pretty tight in terms of being able to get into the exit lane. Previously, when Auto Navigate on Autopilot first came out, it was unable to take this exit. It said Navigate on Autopilot unavailable for this maneuver initially. And I noticed that the Navigate on Autopilot had much richer uh, error messages that would pop up when it first came out for tow boot detection as well. Uh, but now there seems to be a situation where uh, it's just become more generic and just says unavailable for whatever reason without giving a clearly defined reason. So again, this exit was typically not being able to be taken and I'm going a little bit fast for this area. So I'm interested to see what's going to happen. I'll be prepared to take over right here. Wow. Slow down aggressively and again, got over to the right too aggressively, almost close to this curb there. Now it's slowing down, becoming more compliant to the rules. Now maybe a little bit too slow right now. Again, a very steep off ramp here in terms of the degree of turning still all on autopilot by itself until it gets to the main road that it'll ask me to resume again very steep Whoa, a little too much i had to disengage it made me disengage it got too close there so that was good so there you have it navigate on autopilot without confirmation 2009 8.5